Welcome into the Cubs Talk Podcast, brought to you by Tasty Works. That guy's Gordon Wittenmeyer. Tim Stebbins is with us as well. Claire is at the controls. I'm David Kaplan. All right, Tim has got Cubs Twitter all ticked off at him because he wrote, he kind of whizzed on the idea of Shohei Otani getting traded to the Cubs Kinda. after John Morosi said that the other day on the Spiegel and Parkins show. And I would like to know from Tim, why'd you whiz on the report? Uh, Wait a well, minute. It, it wasn't a report. It He's was on re- Chicago radio, so somebody asked him about the Cubs, and he said, well, that wouldn't surprise me. It's an offhand comment. It's not anything close to a report. It's kind of a report. Tim, it's not a report. Why? Uh, I mean, I think it's pertinent to where the team is, and we're getting to that point where you got a month left before the offseason, and you know, the Cubs and media and fans alike are kind of looking ahead to 2023, and uh, I think there's a lot of expectation that Otani is – going to be traded by the angels this winter and um kind of the cubs are someone you would naturally maybe okay with where the cubs are maybe they'd be involved in that and there's kind of a discussion around it so this was kind of a time i think to just discuss it i guess like it's i don't think it's soon enough at this point and we got months until the off season but i really just okay i saw this and i started getting my gears turning and i mean gordon talked about it and then i wrote something just based on what i was my reaction was i guess did you say it grinded your gears? No, I got my gears turning oh, once I saw the. Oh no, it's uh, me that new... grinds my gears. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. for me, yeah, you win with superstars, and you're in freaking Chicago on the north side of the city, where you've got unlimited amounts of revenue, and you don't have payroll constraints. If Shohei Otani and Theo Epstein will tell anyone that listen, they finished second on him. When he made his decision, if there had Morosi been... pointed that out. Right. And if there had been a DH at the time in the National League, the Cubs feel like they would have gotten him. Maybe. If Shohei Otani is going to get moved, and the rationale, because there are people going, why would the Angels trade him, let the new owner make that decision? Well, that's why Washington traded Juan Soto, because the new owner doesn't want to be the bad guy as soon as he buys the team or her, and go, oh, you traded the best guy, we hate you. Sorry, he was already I'm gone. I'm going to defend Tim on this. Look, for one thing, that was an absolute lazy comment for, for Morosi to make. I'm not saying it was a bad comment or good good or bad, but it was lazy. He's on Chicago radio. They ask him about it, and what's he going to do? If he's in Pittsburgh or Boston, if he's on Boston radio, he's not going to mention the Cubs. It's not going to be a, a, on a radar thing because I'll, get, I'll grant you the Cubs finished second to him. The Cubs were all in on it. The Cubs were in a win-now moment at the time, by the way, trying to sustain their window. They're not now. They're trying to create a new window that's totally different. I mean, he's 27 and years of age, right? More, or 25. 25. No, he's 29, I think, at this point. I think he was 25-ish then. Or he'd be 29 next, next summer, I think. So he's at the, you know, the back end of his traditional prime years. I mean, fine. Four, five, even six years, you could expect production out of him. That's not the issue. And... The fact that they were second to twenty-eight. Him, the fact that they went as hard in as they did on him that, that speaks to their interest. True, great, fine. Um, you trade for him, and by the way, there's twenty-nine other teams that are going to be interested in him too, and were then. There were. Th- he so, also has to indicate he'd be willing to sign an extension exactly, with those he's teams. He's got one more year of club control left. So if you're the Cubs, you're not only trading the farm for him. And by the way, the the ask starts at what Soto uh, uh, took to get, mm-hmm. which was. Two of the top three prospects in the system, and two more from the top five or six that had just graduated up the prospect list. That's a lot. Now you start extrapolating that to to where that what that would mean for the Cubs, and you're talking about Nico and Justin Steele and PCA and 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 on down and the, down the line for starters, because this is two players, two star players that you're trading for. Then you got to turn around and pay him. Uh, John Heyman and, and this, Tim wrote this. John Heyman speculated talking to executives that. That might be four years, two hundred million. Which, by the way, I think he's worth. I think as a t- as two players that he represents, he's absolutely worth fifty million a year, which Agreed. is by far, by far, an AAV record in MLB. And the four years, if if you're paying four years, maybe that's a risk that's worth taking. Now, here's the thing: this this club has shown no inclination from an ownership standpoint 
to, to be willing to spend that much and take that kind of risk. And the front office is a risk averse front office as well. And they've just now recently bolstered the farm system. You're going to go from 10, 11 by some rankings to into the 20s again once you make this deal. And you're going to have to backfill those spots that you, the, the, the PCAs of the world and, and whomever. It's a terrific fit if you're there now. If you're a year from now and you've already put a couple pieces in place and you have your team except for this would represent two impact, two way impact, right? Front line starter, middle of the order, left handed power bat. Are you guys serious? We've been sitting here for freaking weeks going, boy, if they could add a top of the rotation Cap, this starter isn't about, and a big bat, this, this guy does both, and we you just guys said are worried that. about the next Pat Klein. We're not worried about it. I'm defending him. The, the, the idea, the story he wrote wasn't that he wouldn't be great here and that fans shouldn't want it and that we all shouldn't want it. It's that it's not going to happen. I got I got a comment. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, I've – Sorry, Cubs Twitter. I've seen people subtweeting me, and I've noticed it. But I think that's the the lost in translation part about this. The headline was he'd be a good fit. It would just be surprising if it happened. And I didn't once say in my story, like, they should not do this for this, this, and that. It was more just like laying out where they are. And I, I kind of put it some Juan Soto perspective in there in that Carter Hawkins said, in August, um, now wasn't the time fine, uh, for both the price and the cost to pull that kind of lever. And does it mean in a couple months it won't be the time? No, not necessarily. But I do think it would just be surprising because even even Morosi said, like, you probably give up three three or four elite prospects and then someone like Steele. Um, I put maybe maybe the Angels Horner would interest them perhaps. I don't know. But You are the GD uh, Chicago freaking Cubs. You've got nothing but money. You have an apathetic but this fan base more than money. Off. Dude, hold on a second. I if don't this care was all about, if the, he's a free agent, then that's perfect. Go can hard we, at can him. Can we bring up last week's podcast when I heard everybody say, well, they don't really have any top-end prospects. They've The system's more solid. Now you want me to effing worry about some good prospects to get the most valuable goddamn player in the sport. We can't afford to do that. Stop. That, okay, that first of all, we can't afford to do that is the Cubs position. That's the that's the premise of the story. Now, if you're talking about Tim writing that story, or if you look at it from this this perspective, the Angels have played in zero playoff games with the best player on the planet, uh, two way player since Babe Ruth, and and the second best player on the planet playing right next to him. So, if you destroy your farm system, mm -hmm. and you take away two of the better pieces on your roster now, which is by far not deep, you have installed a tremendous front-line two-way player, and you have massive holes to fill. And, that's, and that one player is not enough to win. And I'll throw this one other thing in there. And this isn't, again, I'm, I'm, I'm playing a little devil's advocate, and I'm playing from their viewpoint. Picture this. What a tremendous reward that is to have a guy like that at the front of a rotation that already has Stroman if you're able to keep Steele, which maybe you're not in this deal. If you've got uh, Keegan Thompson. And oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Hendricks coming back healthy for another year or two. Right there, you've got a playoff rotation. Easy, yeah. easy, right? And you, you put this left-handed power bat, which is way more powerful than Anthony, Anthony Rizzo ever dreamed of being, in the middle of your order. And you've got a batting order, a championship batting order. All of a sudden, order I got Otani and now, Suzuki now, here's out my, there. Here's, here's my bottom line to that. Here's my punchline. That is a tremendous upside reward. But you get one injury to either that hitter or that pitcher, and you've lost two players. You've lost your two best players. And so there's there when you start talking risk-averse thinking, which the Cubs front office is famous for, that's part of the equation in this. All these things are part of the equation. And, and they've done, they've spent, they, they, they had stars. They had all-stars, MVPs, uh, Cy Young finalists that are gone. Some of them because they jettisoned them. They dumped them when they were still productive. They've now 
built up the farm system a little bit. They're trying to build something. They're doing it incrementally. And maybe they're closer than some of us think. Maybe they're an extra year. You think that they're of the mindset that they're going to go all in on one player with the idea that that's going to be a difference maker when for the team that's trying to move him now, it's not. And once they pay all the player capital to get him, they're going to have to pay a record contract to keep him beyond the one first year. They're owned by billionaires. They print money over there. All right. So so where have you, have you been living in a cave? How, how much of it do they spend compared to the other teams that make that much money? Hold on a second. For three years, they were in the luxury tax. They've shown you that they'll spend money. They just got a crappy team right now. Yes, if, if that crossed my desk and I'm sitting in the Ricketts family home and going, hey, do we have the money for Otani? You're goddamn right we do. If it's Shohei Otani. It's not Bill Otani. It's Shohei Otani. So then why are they a shit team for the last couple of years? Why did they choose to be a shit team for the last couple of years? Well, if they had re-signed, Tim, jump in here. If they had re-signed Baez, Bryant, Rizzo, that would have been catastrophic decisions. Well, number one, we can, we can split. They were never going to sign uh, uh, Chris Bryant, even though he might have been the guy they wanted to the most at one point. Um, Baez, I think, you, you can't just look at Detroit's his season with Detroit this year and say, oh, God, that's what would have happened. I would maintain, and I've talked to other people that believe this, if he stayed in Chicago, he'd be having a normal, productive hobby year. And, he, and, and that infield, by the way, would be jacked between him and, and Horner in the middle. Um, and Rizzo, we both wanted Rizzo back for, for various reasons, cultural reasons, whatever. That wouldn't have been a bad move to bring him back. Um, and he's and he's what second or third in the league in home runs over there in the American League with that short porch and right, uh, granted, but he's still obviously productive. So it wouldn't have been catastrophic had they kept Baez and Rizzo. No, I'm talking about the numbers, 180 for Javi, and it would have gotten done probably at 85 for Rizzo. He turned 70 but down. The, but the 180 for Javi translates to about what he got. For, for Detroit because that came two years later. That was six and one twenty, six and one forty. Forty. Seven so and one forty. So it's something in the twenties. That's not even annually the difference in what the luxury tax went up by. So it you still would have had more room in the luxury tax threshold for free, even adding Javi to that mix. So it wouldn't have been catastrophic. Tim, phone rings, you're the GM and they go, Give me Pete Crow Armstrong, give me Keegan Thompson. Give me Justin Steele. We'll call those three and pick any two other players. You doing it? And Ho and Shohei says, and I'll sign a four-year, $200 million deal. Well, I don't think that gets it done. And I, I think this is kind of interesting hearing your perspective, Cap, because it's the opposite of, obviously, how I wrote it. I think, like, my bottom line was I would just be surprised if they did this based on, like, this is maybe a year or two from now. I think it's... It's a no-brainer. I will say, like, whether they call you or you pick up the phone, you've got to do that. You've got to inquire because you don't know what uh, that package potentially may look like until you inquire. You've got to do your due diligence. Do you know what it does to I, your I fan base, Tim? Agree your that. fan base goes, we're alive again. They're where, apathetic where, right where, now. Where have they shown that they give a rat's ass about their fan base in recent years? Uh, I'll disagree with you. I think they looked at it and went, we're not going to throw good money after bad. This is a rebuild year. This winter, they're going to spend. You you don't think, when they got rid of all those guys, all of them, I mean, what about keeping one? I they mean, ripped the Band-Aid off right. and went, that's it. Right. We're, they're out of here. I'm going to build the next thing. And when it's time, Jed, tell me, here's the checkbook. And the other side of that coin is not giving a damn about what the fans think because the fans didn't want any of that. And if you'd have kept somebody that the fans love. I mean, the fans loved Kyle Schwarber. You non-tendered him. That was just money. You didn't even have to extend him. Again, when you, th and I'm not saying this to you, I've been told by many people in the game, when you start worrying about what the fans are saying, you're going to be freaking sitting with them. Then you do just you just under undermined your whole point because you said, what would it do for the fan base if you go get Shohei Otani? It would show that, guess what? Right. We're serious about winning. But you just said, winning. don't give a damn about the fans. Because the other ones, I believe, would have been the wrong decision. I wouldn't have brought any of them back, you and I said, said that. You just said your brilliant 
person in baseball told you don't listen to what the fans want. Unless the decision makes sense. Well, that's two different things. Rizzo, Bryant, Baez, so before, Bryant, I wouldn't have brought any of them that's back. That's fine. So let's talk about what makes sense. Keep the fans out of it then. Shohei Otani makes sense. He's 28 years old. He's a number one starter. He's your best hitter in your lineup. Game on. Sell a couple shares of TD freaking Ameritrade and let's go. <laughs> go see what it'll take to get him. Absolutely, um, and I, I don't, I don't even necessarily agree with your aggressive posture on making the effort. Like, why is but, it that we're going to hear the Dodgers, the Yankees, and never us? Well, we're not going to hear the Dodgers in on this because <laughs> they've got a complete team. Um, I, I, but I do, I, I wonder what teams would be in on him, what teams would have the player capital to get him. and The, the White Sox. Okay, but they're not going to sign him for a $200 million four-year deal. What if the White Sox said, Luis Robert, like, pick him. Pick who you want. Luis Robert, Michael Kopech, and three of our best prospects. Well, You're telling me they would not do that in Anaheim? One thing the Angels need is they have to get high-caliber pitching, multiple mm -hmm. high-caliber big league type of pitching. Now, some of it might be minor league, but but guys that project. They have to because they've spent tons of bad money on hitting and gotten production out of that hitting. This goes all the way back to Pujols. Now, Pujols didn't live up to the 10 or 12 Rendon. Year contract. But, right, and Rendon's been hurt. Um, they spent a bunch of money to, to, to extend and keep Trout, and he's been an MVP. They spent a bunch – well, they didn't spend a bunch of money – on, on Otani because uh, nobody could when he became a free agent. Um, they've gotten tons of production out of him. Um, yeah, they spent money on and Rendon, uh, and and uh, and it hasn't led to anything because they haven't had the pitching, and so they have to get lots of pitching back in this deal, or it makes no sense for them to make the move. So you know, well, when when we talk about uh, Luis Robert or, or or Eloy, if you want to throw him in, he's on a good contract if he's healthy, and and, and so on and so forth. That's not going to get it done. You got to have more pitching to give them if you're the White Sox. Well, I was going to say like like you got to you got to inquire and to like Cap's point about doing this perhaps and maybe it's something you should be in on and you, you there's a there's a I don't know right but like here's the thing the, the the system depth has been very much increased the last two years and a lot of that is on the pitching side so maybe maybe what you have in there maybe it's not all three of, you know, a PCA or two of the three of PCA Davis and El Contra, if it is something that they, they heavily do want pitching. So maybe that's an area with what the depth, uh, depth you've accumulated in your system. You can kind of, uh, I don't want to say afford, but better absorb a blow in that area of your, maybe throw some pool. numbers at them, some, some numbers of pitchers at them. Right. He, and I'll say this too. Like he, he I'm not that. sitting here saying the Cubs should cling to their prospects for the next five years. I don't think that at all. Like there's definitely going to be a time and maybe it is this winter with Otani. You've got to, you've got to be a big market. It's just so special, Tim. It is. I, I'm with you. And I think that's what I'm saying. You've got to make the call. You've got to be, you've got to be in on what's going on. You've got to at least see what they need. I'm just saying like my, my whole point was with what they've done the last two years and, and what they, I think this would be, kind of a, a reverse of that and i just don't know if it's necessarily the time that they would feel comfortable doing it i'm not saying that that i personally don't think they should or could it's just i'm kind of my whole point of my story was going off of what we've seen where they are and and what that would mean i guess but maybe i could be totally wrong i don't know but i just i wrote what i wrote just, i think it would be that, just that's, never know All right, we got to move on to too, because the, morosi's whole point was i wouldn't be surprised if they did it and and my reaction to that was i would be very surprised if they did it and that's what i'm arguing for for all these reasons and that i get and they, and, they and, have not ever shown you other than when yes. they went for it with chapman and they gave up whatever they had to but that was a much smaller scale and, and then you look at the soto trade which was seismic as some people call it the biggest trade ever in terms of uh, what you gave up to get a certain player, that's where it starts with Otani. And so th that's a hefty, hefty price. It is. Uh, and and, and you know, with a shout-out to the one of the Cubs' big sponsors. Hefty, hefty price. That's it. Hefty. That's the uh, – is that the um, – I don't know what the hell The tarp. Is. Yeah. Isn't the tarp hefty? A, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's where they put seasons like Used this. to be Reynolds wrap. Now it's hefty. They, they, hefty garbage bags were – 
2022 season goes and the there 2021 go. season. And move on. All right, so let's move on to Wilson Contreras. You wrote a very good article on NBCSportsChicago.com about could the Cardinals actually be the team he ends up signing with? Yeah. You and I, I think, have talked to people who say the same thing. That they believe that that's the Cardinals' priority. Yes, and I, I believe that too. I think the Mets will be in on him because that makes sense. But I think the Cardinals might be in on him as hard as anybody. And uh, there is some precedent, too, for them. I mean, they signed Dexter Fowler to a pretty good contract. Eighty-two they and a half million for five years. Very aggressive uh, for a guy who I, w- I would have bet less on than I would bet on, on uh, Wilson Contreras going mm-hmm. forward. Uh, and the need was, the need is more specific now than it was then, too. And there was, just like there will be now, a qualifying offer attached to him. So it's not like that that would shy them away from making a very aggressive offer for him. And I think this, and you know Wilson very well uh, too, this is, uh, this is a guy who um, has always respected and come to uh, admire even personally Yachty Molina. No question. And what the Cardinals have done with their culture over there. It's something that I think he desperately wanted in Chicago to be Chicago's Yachty Molina. And they haven't given him that they, opportunity. Not even close. And I do think that they'll, I do think the Cubs will watch what happens in his free agent market to see if his price falls in their direction, which is kind of, kind of, kind of slimy in a way because, Chintzy. Be, because they're the ones that will have suppressed the market with the qualifying offer in the first place. So it's kind of shitty thing to do to him all over again after all the shitty things they did to him this year. And, and so, Having not had that opportunity here, I think that that would especially appeal to him to be the heir apparent to Yadi Molina. And I think it's, if it's not likely, it's very, very plausible and possible. No question. Tim, what do you think about Molina being the uh, role model for Wilson and then sliding into that role? Yeah, Gordon and I, after the Cardinal series at Wrigley last week, we kind of briefly touched on it. And, like, my whole takeaway was that would be a, a nightmare, I think, for the fans. And, you know, if you're the Cubs, like, Moat Wilson is such an emotional player in a great way. And he's like Gordon said last week, he's one of those guys you love on your team, but if you're facing him, you're like, oh, that's a tough guy to face. So that would be – I could definitely see that the Cardinals would – uh you know, your, your, your long-time catcher is gone, and there happens to be another all-star catcher who you could take from a division rival nonetheless. Uh, I, I think Contreras' market is going to be really interesting. Gordon wrote about it, but, like, the Cardinals, I believe their one qualifying offer they've ever signed someone who was on that was uh, Dexter Fowler. And I think as far as his overall market goes, I wonder how much of an impact that's going to have on him and uh, how many teams would be willing, I guess, to to give up the the compensation to get them? Well, well let me if, let, let me in, insert right there with the new CBA that that just went into effect this season. The the cost to the team signing a player with a qualifying offer went down significantly. There's still a cost there, but it's it's far less than it was even when Dexter Fowler got the qualifying offer. It's a it's a pick much later in the draft. If you lose one at all, if you're a revenue. Uh, a uh, revenue sharing a revenue team. sharing recipient correct then you don't pay at all correct you don't you don't give up a pick at all and and we don't know what the cardinals are going to be because it's still a, it's the system is still so screwed up that you know the, the the cardinals were getting benefits as a small market club for a long time speaking as a cubs fan to both of you if i see him with those Frickin' birds on a bat on his uniform, I literally will throw up watching a game. Is that the definition of double birds? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Those two freaking little double birds. birds on a bat. Oh my God. That, it's bringing and, the Rossi graphic. And I hear, well, we this wasn't the right time. We've got to hang on to our prospects. You know what? That sucks to have it. That, that's the way things are going to head. And by the way, don't put this on Wilson Contreras if he does that. All he wants is he's going to make a decision that's best for him and his family and his career. And if the Cubs aren't in on that, that's on the Cubs. That's on the Cubs. They could have already had this done. Absolutely. There's no question about it. I think if they went to him today and said, here's a fair offer. Yeah. If they they came in strong, not not 
Not like they did with you know what? Not wimpy. We're, we've thought about this. Let's just get this done right now. Yeah, I think he'd sign it. Now keep in mind this, right? So he's making nine point six five, I think, this mm-hmm. year. The qualifying offer is going to be nineteen something, mm-hmm. probably. So it's double what he's making this year. So you're going to extend him the qualifying offer, and he's going to turn it down because he knows he's going to get multiple years guaranteed, and he's coming off his best season. So he he may or may not get that as an AAV. He probably gets close to that or, or more. Um, but if you're the Cubs making him an offer right now before you extend him the qualifying offer, better start with the qualifying offer number because otherwise it's another slap in the face. I, as soon as you do the math on it. Now, they might have their, their Ivy computer, smart guy, Harvard algorithms might say, well, this is what he's worth, so this is what we're offering. Well, then save it. Just save it. So you think if they went to him and said five years – 80. You don't think he takes it? I think he does. I th- I think if I'm him, and, and, if, and if his agent is worth anything, and I, and I think he's, his agent is a good one, um, then I say, I say no. No, d- don't take it. Unless, unless you're giving them a team-friendly deal because you want to stay here that bad, if it's going to work out personally for you, because fine. But if that's because you think that's what you're going to get, we can get you more on the market. And, and if it's about that and people appreciating you, because if you're not going to pay market value, then you're not appreciating him uh, in, in, a, in a ball player's mind, then, then go to free agency. Tim, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm more really curious just what the, the – I think, I think he's going to get paid well for sure. I'm, I'm more curious, like we mentioned Cardinals and Mets, like – other teams that could be in there, like the Padres have been as aggressive as anybody and they were kind of in linked to him before the Soto stuff. And I wonder if the catcher is still something they would want to upgrade and if they would go there or if like uh, not intimately off the top of my head, knowing the Mariners catching situation or a young up and coming team like that, or like, you know, Baltimore, like Carlos Correa talks so highly about Baltimore, like they're ready to win now. Like what, like I, I think his market could be Baltimore. Could be Baltimore's definitely got a catcher. Yeah. They got Adley Rutschman. They're uh, not, Putting that Excuse into me. Wilson. That's a great point. But, you know, either way, like, I think I think with some of these guys' markets last year, like, I think Javi and the Tigers was surprising, and Brian and the Rockies, to me, was a little surprising. So, as far as Contreras, like, you know, there's teams that we could pinpoint, but I, I wonder if it's going to be one of those teams that maybe we don't expect at first glance. Well, guys, it, it was a lot of fun yelling at you. Oh, it's really fun yelling at you, Cap. That's it. I love sparring with you. I just want us to quit thinking we're like the Royals. At, at, that's, Look, man, you, I think long, I speak for the fan base. How long have you read my stuff, going back to the Sun-Times? That's been a theme, an underlying theme of everything I've, I've written. Long, because I've covered smaller market teams. I covered the Twins before I came here, back when the Twins didn't they had that, that stupid stadium. At, the Metrodome. Yeah, that, yeah. I went to college up there. I know you did. And, and so... Uh, I know the difference, and 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 by the way, when I first started covering the Cubs, they acted a lot more like a big market team. Now things have changed in the game. Yeah, that was right before the sale. Right, and and, and they had acted like a big market team. They but had, that was almost like, hey, I've got Gordon's credit card. Let's go spend whatever we want on it, and max it out because we're not going to pay the bill that anyway. One year, yes. Prior to that, they had gone out and and got uh, Aramis Ramirez, and then extended him. They went out and got uh, Derek Lee. This is all prior to that. Yeah. And so, so to speak. They got Maddox. <laughs> and and uh, Nomar. Nomar. And Nomar, right. So they did act like a big market team. Now, the economics of the game were much different than across the board. So, you know, I, I'll take that into account, too. And and the smart guys have come in and, and ruined baseball uh, at almost every level. It's hard to watch, and the economics are – ridiculous and ownership shifts going away yeah thank god actually yes. um but uh yeah so uh my whole thing has been you're not the kansas city fucking Royals. correct so act like it step up and you know there are still teams that use their resource advantage as a competitive advantage and that's absolutely what you should be doing on the north side of Chicago, where you could be the behemoth in both central divisions, 
No question. Tim, have a great day, man. Keep stirring it up with Cubs Twitter. You're good yeah, at it. I, I, I got to say, I think we all agree. My, my last words, my final piece, we all agree that Cubs should and could do this, right? So I think that's what fans, maybe that's well, that's my bottom line, I guess. Well said. Stro, the Stro Show in Showtime. You imagine that. Back to back. You go Shohei Otani, Stroman. And then, and then fill in the Hendricks, yeah. Keegan Thompson. And if Steele's here, I would think he'd have to be in the deal. But Yeah, Steele's probably in that deal. But if you're able to keep Can you tell me what starting pitcher since the All-Star break has the best ERA in all of baseball? Apparently it's Steele. Justin Steele, 147. Best. Yeah. And it's even better than that if you just go start of August. It's unbelievable. Like, it's like under one. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. We'll see. Tim, have a good day, man. Yep, you too. Gordon, have a great day. You too, Cap. All right. For Gordon, for Tim, for Claire, I'm Cap. This is all brought to you by Tasty Works. We'll talk to you again later in the week. Take that.